Hey guys, in this really awesome mini series, I'm gonna be chatting with my newest coach, Jessica, about how to make your website super badass. So stay tuned. So in this week's video, we're gonna cover exactly how to write an about page that doesn't suck ass. You ready to do this, Jessica? Hell yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Kind of feels weird doing it with coffee. I know. Ah, it feels much better. Much better. All right, so let's talk about about pages. All right, Jessica, so talk to me about one mistake that you see therapists making all the time with their about page. It is not your resume. Hell no. Why do y'all do that? Why do you gotta make an about page that's just like bullet points? Like, this is where I went to school. This is what my degree is in. Nobody cares about that shit. So I think the term about me is a bit misleading, honestly, because the best about me pages really aren't about us at all. What do you think? Most deaf. Totes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the third person thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So not only the resume approach, but I see therapists all the time who write in the third person on their websites. Like, Dr. Jane Smith has been a practicing therapist for 47 years. I mean, they want to know about you. You're speaking to them. Yeah, so let's start off your about page just saying, hey, hey, I see you over there. But you're not just going to immediately start talking about you. You're going to actually talk about your ideal client and what's going on with them at the time they're landing on your page. Right, so look at it this way. You're writing a letter to your potential ideal client. So they want to know that you know their pain points and what they're going through, but also how you can help them. They want to make sure that you know them and understand what they're going through. I take it a step further and say, I want to make sure they know that I know you better than you know yourself. Jessica agrees. So here's the tricky thing with about pages. I don't want them all to look exactly the same. So I don't want to give just this, you know, like in psychology today, you kind of have a structure to it, but I think the best about page is one that's really, one that really resonates with your brand, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to start by just saying, hello, if you're reading this page, you must be in a lot of emotional pain. Like That sounds terrible. Write it like an open letter, mm -hmm. but there isn't just like one structured way to do it. It needs to be based on your authentic self. Like, how do you talk? How do you talk in your therapy sessions? Like, how do you interact with your therapist? Yeah. That is what they're gonna want to know. Like, how are you gonna connect with them? Right, so that is a great point, Jessica. I want all therapist websites to read exactly like how the therapist speaks. So don't make it super formal. If the way that you show up as a therapist is more casual, I want my ideal client to know that that's exactly how I'm gonna show up. So what you read online, what you read on my about page is exactly what you're gonna hear me saying in the therapy room. Exactly. So let's talk about credentials because I know so many therapists, especially ones watching a YouTube channel dedicated to them, probably have a lot of certifications and trainings that they want their ideal client to know they have. So where do you suggest we put it? I personally like having a separate page where you can put on their credentials and shit. Okay, maybe not and, and shit. You might. Hey, if it was my page. I'd do it. Having a separate credentials page. And so that way they know they can go to their go there directly and check out where you went to school and all that other shit. Yeah, so if they actually do care, they have a clear place to go. Another thing you could do is just put it at the very bottom of your about page. So people are really connecting with your copy first. And then if they really care about where you went to school or what kind of certifications you have, they'll still get to it, but on the bottom. So those are two different ideas you can do to put your certifications somewhere other than at the top of your about page. Yeah. Now, Jessica, when we talk about authenticity, I often get therapists who say, well, I don't really feel like I should tell people about the horrible thing that happened to me and that's why I'm a trauma specialist. So what do you say to that? Sure, so your client doesn't need to hear all of your story because first of all, that can be re-traumatizing for them. Mm -hmm. So they just need to know that you've been there, you've been through what they've gone through, but at the same time, you've come out to the other side. 
So I think there's a huge difference here between being authentically you and self-disclosing all of your dirty laundry. So when we talk about telling a little bit about your story, you only have to tell as much as you feel comfortable, but you do not have to go into detail and self-disclose about your history of whatever you've been through. But you can at least share anything that you think your ideal client would wanna know about you that's gonna make them feel more connected to you. Mm -hmm. I don't know. At the end of the day, I feel like our about me page is really less about us. It's really talking to them and saying, I get what your day to day looks like. I know how much you're struggling with this issue or as a parent, how much you struggle watching your child have challenges. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're really talking directly to your ideal client and you're saying words like you mm -hmm. instead of just saying Dr. Laura Long has all of this experience, like no one cares about that. If I was looking for a therapist, I wouldn't want somebody like that either. I love that you brought that up Yeah. because I actually think that that's a great way to write an about page is write one that as a client, you would connect with. Because if I'm looking for a therapist, I want their about me page to actually connect with me and use more of that informal language because that's what I connect with. Mm -hmm. Your ideal client is, a, is similar to who you are. I mean, they have a lot of similar characteristics to you. So don't be afraid to be your authentic self. Yeah, because they don't understand half of that psychobabble anyways. Okay, so let's talk about all of the different words we hear on therapist websites that make us want to commit suicide. Supportive. Therapy interventions. Empathic. S safe. Non-judgmental. Compassionate. Client-centered. Evidence-based. Ooh, I like that one. So my favorite line to shit on on an about page is I provide a safe, empathic, non-judgmental and supportive environment for you to process and explore whatever is going on for you with client centered approaches that are evidence based. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So I know that we're going to cover this in another video, so I don't want to jump ahead, but can we please just say, put a professional picture of yourself on your about page and not a selfie. Yeah. Or. Oh yeah. That one either. The it's, thinking. It's not even like the, the thinking one. It's like the, it's like you're about to punch yourself at like that one. That's the one. Cause I have a picture of myself that I'm kind of doing it a little bit, but it feels more natural. I think me too. I'm like this, I'm like, but then pens like thinking man. Pensive. It's just the, <laughs> that's the one. If you're about to like, bam. And then it like cuts your, like the rest of your arms off <laughs> and you have like, yeah. So yeah, professional headshot is key for your about page. Thanks for tuning in. And comment below if you have any other ideas that maybe we missed on how to make your about page badass. See you next week. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to click subscribe and visit us at yourbadasstherapypractice.com. I have a free four part video e-course on taking your psychology today profile from bad to badass. Can't wait to have you join us.